If you use DAX in Power BI to any extent, then it is very crucial for you to understand row context and filter context, which are essential for constructing any type of DAX function. Today we will do a deep dive into these concepts and see how we can use them to construct any DAX much more efficiently. The data that we are going to use for this exercise is a sales data and link will be in the description in case you want to download and follow along. So let's start with row context. In simple terms, it means to refer to the current row of operation. So if you look at the data one row at a time, so let's say for example manually I'm just looking at this first row item and then once I have observed or scanned the first row, I moved on to the second row. So here in a sense. I'm actually changing my row context. Now this is exactly what Power BI is doing in the background while dealing with row context. Let's understand this with a couple of examples. So in this data, let's say I want to create a calculated column. Okay. Now calculated column by default has a row context. Okay. So this is what I mean. So let's say I'm going to insert a new calculated column. I'm going to name it as manufacturing cost and the calculation I'm going to do here would be unit sold multiplied with manufacturing price. Okay. So I'm going to say unit sold multiplied by manufacturing price. Okay. Now if I enter, it will create a new column and because calculated column by default has a row context, it will automatically go one row at a time, scan the table and then provide you with the output. So it went to the first row first, multiplied these two row values and then provided you with the output, moved on to the second row and did the same thing. And it did it till the end in an iteration. Okay. Now that's what the row context is. Each time when an operation is happening in calculated column, Power BI is changing its row context and then applying that calculation onto your current row of operation. Now, what if you want to create a measure? Now, measure by default does not have a row context. Okay. It works on aggregation. So let's say I want to create a new measure here. Now in this new measure, which is called manufacturing underscore cost underscore M, we need to replicate that same calculation we did in calculated column. How will we do that? Now by default, because measure does not have any row context, it cannot be done by simply mentioning the column name. Okay. If you do that, it will give you an error. So if I just say unit underscore sold multiplied by manufacturing price, then this will obviously give me an error. Okay. In order for this to work, what you need to do is you need to apply an iterative function, which will be scanning the table one row at a time. And one of those iterative function is called sumx, which is perfect for this example. So I'm going to just say sum X, I'm going to mention the table name, which is sales. And now in the expression, I can just simply say unit sold multiplied by manufacturing price. Now what it does is it will scan the table, go one row at a time and then apply the same expression or the same formula onto that row. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all the columns inside a table in this reporting view so that we can visualize what's happening. Now, if you see, we have the measure that we just created, which is manufacturing cost underscore M. And we also have the calculated column values here. And if you see both the values are matching exactly, that is because we applied a sum X, the measure went one row at a time and applied the calculation gave you the values. Now let's understand filter context. Now filter context is something which exists by default in every operation that we do within Power BI. Now a filter context can be changed through uh, slicers, filter pane that you see here, or you can do it within visuals and DAX itself. And it can be influenced by the relationship that you build at the backend. So we'll see an example of each one of them. So let's start with the most basic one. If I create a normal table with a country and manufacturing cost in it, the value that you see here, it is 
automatically being filtered by Power BI. Okay. And in this, the filter context is if you see Canada, it's showing you the number for only Canada. If you see France, it's showing you the number for only France. Now, if I try to add any new column to it, let's say, for example, I add segment to it. It again applied another filter context. And now this number that you see here is for Canada channel partners. And this number is for Canada enterprise and so on for all the other numbers that you see. So by default, Power BI has applied that filter context onto it. Now I can change any filter context by the use of slices, filter panes, or any additional DAX that I can write. Okay. So let me change the filter context by applying a filter here. So I want to say segment is only for channel partners. Okay. So now the total that it is showing and the numbers that it's showing is only for channel partners. It has completely ignored or removed all the other segments from the final calculation. Now let's see how you can do this using a DAX function. Okay. So I'm going to write a new measure here. And in this, I'm going to say calculate sum of manufacturing cost. And now I'm going to change the filter context. I'm going to say where country is equal to Canada and segment is equal to channel partner. Let me use this new measure inside a card so that you can see the number. Now, if you see, it's showing me the same number as you see in this first row, because now I have created a custom filter context using a DAX function. Now you can also have a filter context, which is influenced by the relationship that you have in the backend. Okay. So we're going to add a small table to our power BI. First one would be country and second column would be a short form name for that particular country. Okay. So let me just quickly import that table. Now I have loaded that new table into this. And as you see, it has two columns here, country and short name. And if I go to the relationship tab, it has created a relationship between uh, these two tables using the country column. Okay. Now, one thing to note here is the filter context. Okay. Is represented here by this arrow. Okay. Now here the filter context is moving from country table to your sales table. Now, if I double click, I can change it to a both directional filter, but usually we don't do that because this can create weird results within your data. Okay. So I'm going to keep it as it is. This country column has unique row items. So that's why it's saying one and here it says many. So this relationship is one to many and the filter context is flowing from country to sales. Now, if I use the country column short name in this report view, and let's convert that into a slicer. Now, if I select Canada from this automatically, the table below has applied a filter context and it is now showing me only values for Canada. So I hope you understood how row context and filter context is very important while you're creating your DAX functions. Now at the end, I'm going to show you one more example of a new measure, which will be able to bypass any other filter context, which is already applied on the data. So I'm going to create a new measure here. I'm going to call this bypass calculate sum of manufacturing cost. And now in the filter context, I'm going to use a function called all. Okay. Now what all does is it returns all the rows in a table, ignoring any filters that might have been already applied. Okay. So I'm going to say all from the sales table. Okay. And now if I use this bypass into this table here, what it's doing is it's basically giving you the grand total of all the countries which were there bypassing any other filter, which was already created by the other slicers or other relationships. So in this case, we already applied a Canada slicer here or this filter pane. So I hope with this, you have understood what filter context means and how you can manipulate the filter context using various methods. So that's it for today. If you're liking my content, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.